End Time Ministries International Bible University is the premier Bible teaching university, graduating students for 50 years and discipling, equipping, and commissioning them into their callings. EMIBU has been established by Dr. Ken and Lorella Meyer with Dr. Joseph Nasrallah as academic dean. Our accrediting body is the largest Christian accreditor in the world, giving you the opportunity to study and earn your degree from anywhere in the world with our online curriculum. Whether you are a new student embarking on your first year of study or a minister of many years who is looking to return back to the classroom, with EMIBU, you can fast track your success. Enroll today and get started on earning your degree in associates, bachelor's, master's, or doctorate programs in a wide variety of theologically based, Holy Spirit inspired, and Christ centered studies. Enrollment is easy. Simply go to universityontheair.org. On the menu, click applying to the university. Fill out and submit our one page questionnaire and our registrar will process your application and contact you to complete the enrollment process. Affordable, effective, practical and convenient, Christian education is now available to you. Put faith in your future and enroll in EMIBU today. God bless you today as you have tuned in the University for the Nations. And actually the university is sponsored by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit spoke to us years and years ago when I was so young that I hardly knew anything about the Bible. Just a newly born again believer, but filled with the love of God and evangelism, a pastor had invited me to come and minister. He says, I want that girl. And so for five nights, there I was, preaching and teaching the wonderful love of Jesus. And then I heard the voice of the Lord so clear, you're going to have a Bible college. Oh, now, if it's Lord. truly God's voice, it comes to pass. And so, anyway, I was so excited. And like, she, my mother and the Lord, and it, Mom, Mom, I've got good news. Uh, God spoke to me. Oh, she probably thought I had too much spaghetti. <laughs> because I was just a young believer. And, and then... Um, uh, prophets came by and it was the overflow of the, the hippie movement and the 70s or the early 70s and so these prophets uh, said Sister Mallet with all these young people you need a Bible college boy oh, did wow. that ever hit her she said Lorella I want to see you and and so she says do you think you can do it I was so excited because I'm just really new and learning the voice of God. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And another, they will not follow. But lambs don't always hear. So we need confirmation. We need guidance, et cetera, et cetera. And so then within one month, it was the grace of God. And I could have never done it without her wisdom and without her leadership. But we had that school recognized, credited. We had that. And Hundreds have gone out from that school, wow. from this school, and so we're, we're so grateful. Sure. And it just humbles me because it was God, and, and to him be the glory. Yes. And until Jesus comes, this is what my heart's desire, and those godly men and women that are with me de would desire. And so I'm going to, uh, uh, again, we're going to have our precious uh, evangelist, Dave, D. Warford, I'm getting it right, it's English. And uh, D, tell us about a miracle that happened in the nations that you, one of the nations that you preached. Well, uh, what, what one thing that really comes to mind is in India, and I was, it was an extraordinary experience because they didn't have chairs. <laughs> they piled hay, I guess it was hay, straw ah. in rows. Oh, wow. <laughs> here are these people sitting in this hard wood floor, uh, no, it was uh, concrete, and uh, one of the most amazing things, children were absolutely in rapt attention, mm. not like in America where they'd be yeah. running, I, I, I was astounded. But anyway, I'm up there, and 
there's some commotion in the uh, foyer and they came and got me and I went out there and a man with a demon, it was manifesting. Mm -hmm. So I had the joy of casting it out. Actually, there are, uh, as a, an evangelist, I'll do virtually all the things you would expect an evangelist to do, mm -hmm. prophecy and gifts of the Spirit. But there's two areas where God has used me the most consistently beyond that. And one is uh, an anointing against pain. Uh, we've had long lines of people uh, with chronic pain. Wow. Uh, just come up to the microphone and testify of pain immediately leaving. It's common to see people who couldn't raise their arm oh, for years. Yes. Couldn't bend over for years. Uh, uh, had to walk in with a walker or crutches or a cane, be able to walk out. Some of them run around the building and shouting. And uh, so uh, I thank God for using me primarily against pain, though we've seen so many other things healed. But when, when I was a young man visiting a little Pentecost church, a godly woman came up to me and prophesied over me that I would have a strange ministry. <laughs> <laughs> what's stranger than casting out demons <laughs> and so that is yes. what I've uh, been involved with for over four decades casting out demons in fact the book that I'm working on now is going to uh, a significant part of the book it's called miracles are your destiny and of course the Bible says these signs follow them that believe right mine and they'll cast out devils it says that first it doesn't tag it off at the end it says it first in my opinion, the first order of business of the Church of Jesus Christ is to dislodge the powers of darkness wherever I they are. That. And so, um, I, I don't know how many demons I've cast out. And is it seeing them gag and cough and try to choke me and vomit on the carpet? It's so funny. One time I was in a church and I ministered. I'm waiting as the pastor prepares my love offering and a gal came up to me and said, I think I need deliverance. I started to pray for her and she vomited orange vomit. Never seen that color like that all over the carpet. And the pastor came a few minutes later, had oh, me really my check. Excited. He looked at the vomit and said, boy, when you come to a church, things happen. <laughs> but apparently he didn't like what happened. He never had me back. <laughs> so I just learned to live with the fact that many pastors, unfortunately, they don't aware accept it. But they don't accept it. It scares them. They'd rather have people report the good coffee in the foyer than the demons they saw cast out. Well, that's part of the end type. Do you know that's the gospel of the kingdom message? It is. See, the, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom must go forth to all the world and then the end shall come. And what is the gospel of the kingdom? The good news, first of all, salvation for the soul, healing for the body, and deliverance for the torn, wounded spirit. Because the Lord says, I've come to heal the brokenhearted yes, he and set the captive free. And so many people, as children, they were demons are horrible because they take advantage of children yeah, and yeah. trauma. And so, and so many times we're captive held captive in bondage, rejection, hatred because of a broken heart yeah. somewhere. And love and forgive, forgiveness, the love of God. And we need to take authority and recognize the, the power behind it. I'm so glad you preached that message. I'm a believer in it, and I was raised on it. We can have, in fact, when I came, first came to that church, um, Community Chapel, World Outreach, my pastor was Pastor Esther Mellett. And uh, I indeed knew I, I knew the Lord. I was like a little good little Baptist girl. But I certainly, and, and I knew that I was saved, but I, my spirit was so fearful. Yeah. I ran from people. I didn't want to talk to people. Now God uses me all over the world. Why? Because my spirit, human spirit, was so bound by so much trauma as a child and a young girl. And so Pastor Millet said, Honey, I want to pray for you. And she cast out that demonic spirit of fear. And I got on a I got on a bus, you know, bus bench and started shouting, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten <laughs> son. 
And then, of course, I've had the privilege to minister to Yasser Arafat. You know who oh, he was. Oh, wow. And, 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 and world leaders. Wonderful. Only God could have done something like that. I couldn't have done it. But the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And so now I'm going to, um, this is, we just recently ordained our precious Jerome Smith as an elder, fine man of God, gathering in the, gathering in the sheep, correcting him. But when I saw his faithfulness and loving the Lord, and, and I want to ask you what we have now, a little branch here in Dwarty of End Time Ministries International Bible University. How do you like it? Well, uh, first off, going back to being the demons and so on and so forth, I have a little story to tell. Oh, tell that and please, then get please. on to the other. In 1987, I went through a divorce. I had two little boys, and it was, all, it was my fault. I was no good. I was a drunkard. I was bad news. Anyway, that divorce in 1987, in November, took me to my knees. Now, know this. I was a young Catholic boy doing the Catholic thing. My mom used to tell me, God love her. She's in heaven now. You're going to go to hell unless you repent of your sins. Good for her. She used to tell me over and over again this. And I go, you know what? It finally hit. So when I was repenting of my sins and coming clean before the Lord, uh, the way, only way I knew how, I wasn't led by somebody. I was in a, a little church in Pico Rivera, and it was a Friday night. Most people were out partying Friday night, and I was, I was weeping before the Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. bless you. And, and uh, he sovereignly delivered me. Like 50 pounds of weight came right out of my shoulder. And I felt so alive. Praise and, God. And I thought to myself, what is this with the Catholic background? I, I thought somebody was delivered from purgatory. I didn't know at the time there was no purgatory, <laughs> you see. <laughs> but anyway, I found out, and it's been a struggle ever since then, um, feeling God's love for two weeks in a row, overwhelming, the, oh, just yeah. liquid love through my whole Praise body God. over Praise and God. over again. I used to tell my older sister, she's in heaven now too, I used to tell her, Barbara, I don't know what this is. It's so much love. It's like, I said, I can't explain it. Mm. And, and her and her friend, they just look at me and go, what's <laughs> going on with this guy? They thought I was nuts because I've been, you know, labeled <laughs> nuts. <laughs> but anyway, so it's been a struggle, falling back, coming back, falling back. But this last time, uh, I saw Pastor Ken and Pastor Lorella about three years ago, and uh, I... I was at a church, and I wasn't being fed the Spirit like I liked. I liked more, um, more Holy Spirit-filled mm -hmm. type environment, you know, mm -hmm. praying in tongues, prophesying. Mm -hmm. And I missed that. And so I saw them, and they invited me to their church in Downey at that time, and I haven't stopped going since. And since then, I got into the Bible University, and I have been blessed. Mm -hmm. I, I am growing like I should have been growing 30 years ago. Praise God. But I guess with Moses, his ministry started when he was 80 years old. When he old. was 80. Yes. Yeah, You're so, much younger than that. <laughs> yeah, 10 years younger. <laughs> so anyway, so the university, and I've, we've been bringing my, my son, Fabian, and her, his friend. What a precious young man Fabian yeah, is. Yes. <laughs> and yes. so um, by marriage, he's my son. And... Um, We've been, and his friend Arthur, and we, they, they love it, and they are growing too. And, but I'm really growing. I, I just love it, and I say, wow, I should have had this years ago. And so I really, really appreciate it, and I really appreciate w for you bringing me up out of, out of the... Well, the I, I, I saw you respond to God, and it's the response. It's the heart response. Right. N not just head knowledge, not, and the way you treated people with honesty and sincerity. And because of that, what I want you to do is give an invitation. I want you to lead people to the Lord. Okay. They're all over the nations of the earth. Praise okay. God. Well, what I like to do uh, for you people out there that's listening to my voice, and I'm just telling you, God is real. Yes, he will do something in your life. But the Bible says we have to seek him. Mm -hmm. And like Pastor D said, we seek him with our own heart, all our heart. And, you know, he will make himself real to you. But what I, I like to tell people is, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And that um, for Christ, 
For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that's what you have to do. You have to believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that point, all of us have to call upon the Lord. You know, it's not, you know, the church calls upon you or your daddy did that. So you don't know everybody. Each individual has to do it, you know. And Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking at your door. He goes, if you hear my voice and open the door, that's the door of your heart, he will come into you Amen. and dine with you. Hallelujah. You know, and so that's fellowship. That is fellowship. So God, not, not only did he go to the cross to save you from your sins, but what Adam and Eve lost in the garden was fellowship. He also restored fellowship because of that. Wonderful. Oh, and so this is a blessing. God wants to fellowship with you because he loves you. He loves you. It's, I like to tell people, you know what, people, there's the abortion in our country is rapid, okay? It's, it's bad news. Okay. And you know what? When you look at it, those babies aren't lost. But when you stop and think about something, look at all the children. If they hadn't been aborted, could have been led to Christ. Because God loves people, and he wants his kingdom full, you know? Absolutely. That's, this is what I have to say. Very, very Thank good. And, and so now, as, we're, as we are thinking about miracles... You've heard the lies of these two wonderful, godly men. They're a miracle. I'm a miracle. Yeah. I, I came to the Lord just uh, perhaps as a child. I, actually, my parents were, were from backgrounds of, of glamour. Uh, I don't want to say Hollywood. My mother was a very, very uh, famous dancer. And uh, my two aunts were one aunt... Uh, led uh, the actually the governor of California many years ago on a <laughs> and she had a, she had the queen of the queen of trades contest all over all oh. over California and and so uh, so I came from very glamorous people and we and heathenous can be I suppose but apparently I went um, through a childhood accident I kind of bent my road my road kind of bent, and I thought, oh, it's so ugly, and all this, and you know, how we can, uh, the enemy can just uh, really uh, distort things as a child, and, but however, there was a spark within me, that spark of being maybe an extrovert that God wanted to get hold for his glory, and yes. not for man's glory, so I went to a church with a girlfriend, and I got, and at that time, my mother had had remarried, all the glamour life would, was not for her. She was a very good person, shall we say morally. She didn't yeah. know the Lord at that time. But I got on the coal bin, and I, st and I was drawing all these kids. And I said, if you don't repent, you're all going to hell. <laughs> <Can you? laughs> but my mother wrote a story about me. Wow. And she said it brought tears to her eyes, so I knew a seed had gone inside of her. Mm. And then, of course, much later on, and she got out of that business because she did. She was not. She was raised as a godly Italian. My my um, grandmother came from Italy, and they are very, very staunch. And and uh, grandma would go with mom uh, to many of their, shall we say, the the appointments and everything. She got out of that and became a policewoman. Can you believe? Mm. <laughs> oh, so anyhow. Um, Later on, though, this hunger, when I was about 16 or 17, I didn't, couldn't always follow the Italian way because they, you know, housekeeping and, and, uh, and the husband, Cooking. you know. And, and, and that's right. Part of it's right. But I thought, I can't embroider, and I don't want to embroider all this <laughs> stuff. So do you know what I did? Hmm. I embroidered, got this pillowcase, and I said, dear God, I'm humble like a little ant, still breathing the breath of life. It was like that seed that I must have had as a child. Somebody obviously prayed for me that, that, um, that I would be d delivered because I almost died. Uh, but you can see how God's seed. And then when uh, I was um, uh, a young woman, I, I married, and I told this Man, I was just 17. I said, it's the most important thing in the world to me that you believe in God. And the fellow didn't. But that's our, 
I still hadn't been truly born again. Well, when I came to Pastor Mel, or rather I, um, in a bit, little Baptist church, it was like I heard bells, <laughs> and I knew things were different. I heard bells. Mm -hmm. I even had visions before I was spirit-filled. Mm -hmm. I saw Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and heard oh. the most beautiful music. Mm. And then when I got spirit-filled and, 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 and delivered from that demon, Jesus stood... He came into my room. It was not a vision. It was the brightest bright, the glory of God. And his eyes were like a liquid blue. They were so beautiful and they mm. were so gentle. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you to preach. And I'm scared. I'm still not delivered from this fear yet because this was early. And uh, so what happened is I ran to my Bible and I flipped it open and there was that scripture that jumped, jumped out at me because I didn't want people to think I was crazy. You know, and then I was real shy. Meeting Pastor Mel, it was another story. But I was, I was and I, she imparted, I know, deliverance. And later on, I, just so many wonderful things happened and uh, different situations. But here I am today, so grateful to be his servant. Hallelujah. And I bless the name of Jesus Praise forever God. and forever. And so we're just coming to the close of our broadcast. And, um, and did you pray the prayer that... Did you pray the prayer with the people, did you not? Oh, yes, I did. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah, right. All right. Okay, well, one I'm, last thing. Go, I, I, I want each one of you to say uh, for in another minute, what is the last thing you would tell those people for, the, for this broadcast? Well, for, uh, if you're starting with me, I would say the most important thing in your life would be to grow in Christ. In other words, uh, just don't get saved and stay there. And Well, I'm going to heaven. No. There's a, there's a growing process. And don't stop it. Let the Holy Spirit work upon you and deliver you and help you along on your walk with him. And the Lord will take care of you. Amen. Absolutely. And Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. And the gospel of repentance was something that Jesus, John the Baptist, Paul the Apostle, Peter all preached and uh, repentance is the most important thing we do day by day. I was on my face repenting before God for uh, just an attitude, a few words I spoke with my wife that were just uh, unloving. And it's a way of life. Yes. And so if you have anything in your life that the Holy Spirit is convicting of and you know you shouldn't do it, then get on your face before God and repent and keep repenting for the rest of your life until Jesus comes. Amen. And this is, a, this is so true and so beautiful. But concerning growth, I see areas of growth. First of all, we're washed in his blood. Yes. We're justified. Justified never sin. How great is that? But the Holy Spirit will continue to bring forth the washing of the water of the word, his blood. And then we come to, we're, uh, we come and we receive of the Holy Spirit, water baptized, then we're sanctified. And sanctified means set apart. The, we begin to grow when the Holy Spirit begins to uh, come forth and there's the evidence, the, the gifts of the Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues as your prayer language for when you do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit will pray through you. And then, then the hunger for the Word and the cleansing of the Word and the changing, we're changed from glory to glory, becoming more like Jesus. And then... The glorification is not something just only when we pass from this life to the next, but that we were washed in his love. Yes. And then, so there's 30, 60, 100 fold. Yeah. Jesus says, I'm the way. Then he brings us the truth, sanctify them in truth. Then the abundant overcoming life. Amen. And so this is a precious teaching from everyone which makes a whole, we're the body of Christ and we love you mm. and God loves you and that's the way it's going to be. God loves you and we love you. That's for the world to see. We love all the nations of the earth. If there's something we can do to help you, we also want to thank Cross TV, write to them for they are also on a wonderful spirit-filled mission to touch the lives of many, many people throughout the nations of the earth. And so God bless you, keep you, Make his face shine upon you and give you his peace.